Okay, next I'd like to discuss queuing theory. Uh, queuing theory is just basically the study of waiting lines. Here's the definition from Wikipedia. Why would anybody be interested in studying queues or, or waiting lines? Well, there's a number of reasons among uh, many that uh, people hate to, to wait in, in queues. If you can shorten the queues, it may result in increased profitability. And you'll have happier customers if the queues are shorter. Uh, some behavior that customers do that, um, if they're impatient, can cost money. For example, customers who leave shopping carts full of groceries at checkout counters um, will result in a lot of wasted frozen food, cold food. Plus, the employees have to take all the uh, other groceries back and put them back on the shelf. Also, by studying queues, you might be able to improve processes. For example, about 30 years ago, most banks had a, a line or a queue at each cashier, and then they figured out with queuing theory that they'd be better off if they used a snake queue instead of in these individual lines. You can also use queuing for improving manufacturing processes as well. First, some definitions. The X's here in the little diagram are the queue, and the O's represent the, the servers. Now the channels are the number of servers. The stages go from one queue to the next queue, so you could have a whole series. For example, in a manufacturing process, you wait in one queue, you'd be served, and then there's another queue and, and another set of servers. These multi-stage, multi-channel queuing models can become quite complicated, and some people would prefer to simulate them using Monte Carlo simulation instead of using queuing theory. There are a number of assumptions that go along in, in queuing theory. Uh, the first is whether the, the length of the queue is finite or infinite. Finite would be, for example, uh, a number of boxes where customers can stand or, or manufacturing goods are placed. Infinite, for example, would just be very large. Uh, if you're on a toll road and you're lining up at the toll booth, that road between that toll booth and the previous one is pretty long. It's not infinite, but as long as it's pretty big, it's considered to be infinite. Likewise, the set of possible customers can be infinite or finite that fill the queue. We also make assumptions about the patience of customers. Uh, if they're not patient and they leave the queue with some probability distribution underlying, again, you might want to use uh, simulation instead of queuing. And of course, we make assumptions about the uh, arrival times and uh, the, time, the time between arrivals and then the, uh, the service times as well. Now, impatient customers spelling error there. Um, <clears throat> use various strategies. Uh, they will balk. Balking customers are customers who intended to join the line and then they don't. Reneging customers are, are, are people who join the line then they leave it because they figure out that the line is not moving long enough. Jostling is jumping from one queue to the next. If you're standing in one line and you see one other line that's going, f or at least seems to be going faster, you'll, you'll jump on over there and join another queue. Colonizing is my personal favorite strategy. Colonizing customers will, will stand in a line and they'll jump to a newly opened line. So when I'm at Sam's Club, I try to make the line look longer than it is and, and eyeball the possible cashiers who would maybe perhaps come and open up a, a new line and then I can be the first one to jump in there. But what I hate is sometimes they'll have a policy that says that the, um, the employee has to go to the next person in line and, and take them over. And I always feel that that's not following the rules of colonizing, but some stores have that policy. Uh, 
A friend of mine would follow the employee with the cash drawer, hoping that they would open up a line. Another popular strategy in families is that you do the two-line strategy. Um, one person stands in one line, another person stands in the other line, and then whichever line is going faster, then that's the line that you actually join, or at least stay in. So in our next video, I'm going to talk about an example with a, a single server model. It's the simplest queuing model. And it's actually the only queuing model that I'm going to discuss in this course because uh, once you get beyond these simplest models, um, the formulas and the theory gets uh, pretty complicated, I think. And a lot of people then will just jump to simulation instead of using queuing models. But as an introduction, I'd, I'd like to go through this simple single server model. Uh, we assume that there's an infinite source of customers, there's an infinite queue length, the uh, we have Poisson arrivals, the arrival rate is Poisson distributed, the service times are exponentially distributed, and we have very patient customers. They're not going to renege, they're not going to jostle, they're not going to balk or do anything like that. So in the next video, I'll go through an example of a warehouse and, and, uh, and loading and unloading trucks. Well, what, why are we doing this? Well, there are cost trade-offs, and as you uh, increase the number of servers, your waiting costs are going to decrease. But as you increase the number of servers, the serving cost obviously increases, so these are diametrically opposed. The optimal point then, the lowest cost option is where these two cost functions intersect although I think most people would underestimate the cost of waiting. So um, you've got to be careful when you're doing these cost trade-offs.